Hi everybody, hope you're well. We're in the camper van on a very, very wet and windy um, Yorkshire summer. It's July at the moment and this video is all going to be about these two. And a question we've had for quite some time um, about should you get a male or a female whippet? And obviously Rosie now, believe it or not, she's just coming up to three. Hi you Rosie. And uh, Louis's eight, he's nine in January. So we've had a whippet before Louis, uh, Ben. So in total, we've probably had whippets for coming up to 19 plus years. And we've spoke to many people about male or female whippets. And we obviously know lots of people that have whippets. And this is our conclusion about male or female whippets. And, and that obviously, um, depends on the dog itself. There are characteristics that all whippets have, male or female. You know, they like to sleep a lot, they like a good run, they are sight towns, they're hunting dogs. But there are differences that we've noticed, certainly between these two and some of our friends and people we've met over the years that have whippets, that we just thought we'd do a video about it. But I suppose the main thing that people consider when they're buying a dog or getting any dog is to get a male or female dog and they're slightly put off I think of having a female dog because they come into season and you have to allow them to come into season for one two or three times because before they actually go off to be spared and then there's the cost of them being spared and of course it's an operation and they have to be cut open and have things removed which uh, when you have a beloved pet is a bit of a, a big decision for you but there's a video up here about all we went through with Rosie and it was a good experience in the end and the knowledge we learned from that and how our vet dealt with it. But I think that's the main thing because obviously if you want a dog to be castrated everything's on the outside and it's easier to do but a bit more of a operation for a bitch and particularly a little dog. Now whippets are not great with anaesthetic and obviously if they're going to be spared they have to be completely unconscious. And Rosie's actually a little whippet. Um, for, she's in the start size range for a whippet, but she is small for a whippet. How are you, darling? <laughs> Rosie is a different character to Louis, and I suppose, like people, animals have different characters. Even if there's the same breed, they'll have different characters. And I suppose their life experiences are going to be slightly different, which affects their behaviour as well. So Louis, we got Louis as a rehome. I think he'd had three homes before he come to us, maybe four. Um, I think he was looked after and loved. He didn't have a bad life, um, but some of that must have affected him. So he come to us when he was just over about a year old, I think he was. Our first whip, it was a rehome. He was actually a rescue dog and he was rescued by the RSPCA. And he'd had quite a terrible experience when he was younger. And he come to us when he was four and he was just an adorable dog. But quite timid and he liked his routine, but he's still a lovely dog. As Louis, as a male dog, is very similar in characteristics to Ben. Um, Rosie is very cuddly and wants to be with people all the time. And Louis loves to be with me. And um, even though he's a therapy dog, he does like time by himself. He's a retired therapy dog now. I run a charity that works with children, young people and families and I used to take Louis to work and as part of that we got him trained and assessed as a therapy dog and he used to meet children and young people and spend some time with them, particularly if they was upset. He was great at that. But Rosie will always be want to around people. Um, she'll always want to cuddle up. Every time you lay on the settee she'll jump on top of you, lick your face and want to lay next to you. Louis's a bit like that but Rosie's definitely more um, a, a loving dog and affectionate dog and when we was looking to get a dog um, to go alongside Louie um, that's something Jo really wanted she really wanted a loving affectionate dog because Louie undoubtedly is my dog hey, he still loves Jo and spends a lot of time with her but he's, he always wants to be with me he, he spends most of his time with me and he wa likes to be around with me um, and Rosie she'll anybody really she's very affectionate to us, us too but if we have people staying or friends coming round she'll be laid on them licking the face and cuddling up to them she loves that that uh, close relationship with with other human beings and regarding dogs Louis actually come from a house that had a cat and another dog 
but he's not a fan of a cat. Um, Rosie has only met a couple of cats in her life, in her three years, and <laughs> and um, she, the last one she met was on the field where we run, where we run the dogs. It's a, a fenced-in field, and she just stopped and stared at this cat. I think she was just thinking, "What the hell's that? I don't know what that is." Um, but she's not an aggressive dog in any way, isn't Rosie? Louis can be. Louis can be aggressive, particularly with big dogs. Um, we had a nasty experience once where a, a Labrador was let off on a, an enclosed field when we was walking early in the morning and it just ran straight across and attacked Louis. So he's had a thing about Labradors, he doesn't like Labradors, particularly black Labradors. And he doesn't like Alsatians, which I presume is something to do with in the past. But Louis, he's alright with Whippets and other Sighthounds and Greyhounds, he's great with them. And he's been absolutely amazing with Little Rosie. Um, and if you've seen our videos about when Rosie was a puppy, you'll see that Rosie's development is very much based on copying Louis and what Louis's been up to. The good rule for getting a puppy is always see the parents. So we had the opportunity to meet Rosie's mum and the rest of the litter. And Rosie's mum was quite small and uh, she was very affectionate and a great mother and I think Rosie would be a great mother but we don't want to breed with her um, that's why I had the spade and we don't want the problem of her coming into season and all the mess with that so the characteristics of a dog and different breeds of dog you know spaniels are on the go all the time um, Labradors can be really well trained but, and whippets they just love to run and sleep but they are quite affectionate dogs and I think that's a key difference between a male dog and a female dog. I think the female whippets, generally speaking, it's a lot of it's to do with characteristics of that particular dog. I think the female whippets are a lot more affectionate. Um, not always, we know some people who've got female whippets and they're more like Louis. <laughs> but generally speaking, I think they're more affectionate. Um, training wise, Louis undoubtedly is an extremely intelligent dog. He, he knows lots of words and it's not just now he's in his later years. When he was younger, when he was one, you could use lots of different words with him and he'd understand exactly what they are. And on a night now, he'll know exactly what time it is. If it's time to go to bed, he'll be walking up to us and looking at us to go to bed. <laughs> If he's not had a treat or if he's missed his last minute biscuits or something, he will literally go up to the box and start nudging his dry biscuits to remind us. He'll come up to you, look at you and bark at you to tell you something's wrong. Rosie doesn't do much of that. She's obviously interested in the food, but she just follows around Louis. But Louis is a male dog and Rosie coming along. He's not been over attractive to her in a sexual way. We have no problems at all with that. He's very much looked after as part of the pack. And in the early days when we first got her, he didn't let her know that he was the boss. And he snapped at her. He didn't bite her, he just snapped at her when she got out, out of control or a bit too playful. And particularly if she went for his food. So Rosie knows very clearly now that she needs to stay away from Louis's food. Um, Rosie, just on the food side, Rosie's only ever had pooch and mutt food and her skin, her health, her poos, and her fur uh, is just absolutely lovely. The pooch and mutt food's been great for both of these, and highly recommend that. We've tried lots of others, and there's a video up here of some of the others we've tried, but definitely pooch and mutt. And I think now Louis coming up to the age of nine, I think we might be finding, uh, using some of the supplements that come from pooch and mutt to help him with his joints and things. These two do run generally every day. They haven't today because it's literally chucking it down with rain. But uh, we do let Louis have a warm up now before he starts to run about to get his legs and his joints must move in before he has a good run around. But he'll still put in a good run. He'll, he'll run for a good 20 minutes, half an hour chasing his ball. Rosie's a bit more lazy. She'd rather get the ball and lay there and chew it. Or she will run up and try to pinch the ball off Louis, which is quite funny. And he just looks at her in disgust as part of that. But, I mean, generally, Whippets are just adorable dogs. They're lovely. You can walk them all day. You can, if bad weather like this, you can just let them out to do what they need in the garden. And they're still happy. They're just lovely, adorable dogs. They're not on you all the time for something. 
the, the reason to train and the well behaved. Another thing, and I don't know if this is generally with all dogs or just whippets, but when they get to the age of about three, which Rosie's just coming up to the age of three now, they really do calm down. Dog years, seven equivalent to seven human years, and they do develop really quick. Um, so a, a whippet puppy, when you get a puppy, if you've had one, you'll know they develop so quick and grow so quick. When we saw Rosie at eight weeks old, she had a really short, stubby nose. And she didn't really look like a whippet at all. And she just changed so quickly. I think 27 weeks, you're almost up to full size of a whippet now. Um, but to the age of three, when they get to three, everything settled down. Particularly if they've had good training. They like the routine. Sticking to a routine is absolutely key. What time you get up, what time you go to bed, what time you feed them, what time they go out. Everything on a routine. So they get to know that's the norm. And that really helps with their development. And Rosie is so settled in. She's so funny in the morning. She'll get up, we'll take them out. They'll have the breakfast. She'll see if there's any leftover bits of toast from breakfast from us. And then she'll go upstairs and crawl into one of the beds. And you won't see it till about 10, 11 o'clock. You're so funny, aren't you? You're like a little teenager. If I was considering getting more than one whippet, I would do it the way we do. I'd get your first whippet, let them go for all the training and everything else and settle in. And I'd let them to be probably a year before I got my next one and then bring your next one in just to make life a bit easier on you and the dog. For trying to train two at the same time, if you get it right with your first dog, the other dog will learn from it. So having two at the same time might be a great idea, but you're giving yourself a lot of work and it's more difficult for the dog. Because Rosie, as well as learning from us and how we speak to dogs and what how we train them, she also learnt a lot from Louie. So we would say things and she'd look at us to say, what does that mean? But she'd see what Louie did and follow Louie through that process. So you wouldn't get that if you got them both at the same age. But having them at different ages, Louis being settled in. Louis was one year old when we got him and he was well settled within a few weeks when he, he come to live with us. And I think that's the sort of age range, one to two years or even up to three years where you get them really settled down and into their routines and calm down slightly from the puppiness. You are adorable, aren't you? Are you adorable? Look at them eyes. Hey, Louis, you all right, Lou? Lou? <laughs> He's just looking out there at that awful rain and weather, thinking, I don't want to go out there again. Hope you've enjoyed our video about our experiences of male and female whippets. And I think the answer to the question is as to whether to get a male or a female is get one of each because they're adorable creatures and we won't be without either of them. And the winner of the Lark C1 microphone system is, we're not sure yet because we're recording this before the closing date, but we will put a slide in to let you know who's won um, and we will contact you through our email address one man and his whip it at gmail.com. Thanks ever so much to everybody for watching. Hope you're enjoying the videos. There'll be lots more giveaways to come and lots more videos. Do you want to go out? Do you want to go out? Come on then, let's go. Oh.